Living as we do in the aluminium age, we are at risk of succumbing to an insidious attack on our health and mental faculties. In our film, we look at research into this field by scientists at Keele University in the UK, led by Professor Chris Exley, one of the world's leading experts on the connection between ubiquitous aluminium and another of the world's most common substances, silicon. The professor and his team have made a significant discovery, a discovery that shows silica could be the key in the battle against aluminium contaminating our body. Here we meet the professor and ask him to share his discoveries with us. When a fish dies in an acid water from aluminium toxicity where the aluminium level is lower than is present in many of the drinking waters that we have or in infant formulas that we feed our baby, no one says that that aluminium is harmless. So why are we saying that it's harmless to humans? My name is Professor Christopher Exley. I have a chair in bioinorganic chemistry. I'm a head of the aluminium and silicon research group at Keele University. What, one of the things that I write about is uh, that we live in the aluminium age today. Now, the aluminium age, like when I went to school, we, lived, we learned about the Iron Age, the Bronze Age, the Copper Age. Well, today is clearly the aluminium age. The result of living in the aluminium age is that there is aluminium throughout our body, in every cell of our body. And that aluminium has almost invariably come from the activities of man, from us mining aluminium, which only began in, in earnest 120 years ago, and using it in so many different ways that we can't even begin to imagine. So we then have the situation whereby what if, after having used aluminium in so many ways, having exposed ourselves to aluminium in so many ways, we then find absolute evidence that aluminium is toxic to humans. This would clearly be a catastrophic event for many. When she died at the age of 59, Carol Cross had abnormally high levels of aluminium in her brain. The question, had it come from contaminated water? An individual whose wife was exposed to the aluminium in Camelford and died of what was described as an unknown neurological disease, well, he contacted me and said he was not happy with this as a diagnosis for his wife's death and asked if we could investigate it. So myself and a colleague at Oxford University, Professor Margaret Hasiri, one of the world's leading neuropathologists, investigated this case. Uh, Professor Hasiri looked at the brain of this individual who died and found that she died of a very rare form of Alzheimer's disease, a form of Alzheimer's disease which would normally only be seen in people in their very late 80s or 90s, and this woman was in her 50s. And we then here at Keele measured the aluminium content of her brain tissue and found it to be extraordinarily high. Indeed, when this case of, of this particular person went through a coroner's investigation in a coroner's court, the verdict in 2013 of the coroner was that it, he said it was inevitable that aluminium contributed to the death of this woman. We, we are interested in silicon rich mineral waters because quite some time ago now, we were the first in many ways to show a relationship between the element silicon and aluminium. And that relationship was that silicon protected against the toxicity of aluminium. And as part of that research, we then also began to find out that you could use silicon rich mineral waters to remove aluminium from the human body.
What we've been able to show is that by drinking a silicon-rich mineral water, you immediately produce aluminium in your urine. And this suggests to us that drinking silicon-rich mineral waters facilitates the excretion of aluminium from the body. We have been able to test this in clinical trials lasting up to about 12 weeks, both in healthy volunteers and in people with Alzheimer's disease. And in both cases, we've been able to show that over the 12 week period, aluminium is removed from the body such that what we call their body burden of aluminium is reduced over this period of time. We define a silicon rich mineral water as one where the uh, content of silicon, as written as silica on the bottle, is above 30 milligrams per litre or 30 parts per million. The silicon comes from the breakdown of mountains. As mountains dissolve, they release silicon into the water. So in areas where the mountains are young and in the process of being dissolved, you will have high levels of silicon in the water. So we've been working um, with silicon-rich mineral waters for over 10 years now. Um, and most recently, we have been using a silicon-rich mineral water which comes from Malaysia called Spritzer Mineral Water. I drink probably a, around a litre of a silicon-rich mineral water every day because I know that that will help to reduce my body burden of aluminium and therefore help to reduce any possible uh, health effects that aluminium might have both in me now but in the future. In other words, don't wait to get a disease before you start drinking the silicon rich mineral water. Make it part of everyday life. Why not? It can't do you any harm. It can only do you good. When you go to the health food store, you can find loads of so-called silicon supplements. And so the suggestion is you can just take one of these silicon tablets, add it to a drink or something of that sort, and get your dose of silicon in that way. Unfortunately, these tablets do not release the form of silicon, the soluble silicon that's found in mineral waters, in sufficient quantities to produce the biological effects that we see from mineral waters. You know, if they did, then we would already have been using them in our research for many, many years. You know, you have to imagine that if our research was to show, not that aluminium, say, was a cause of Alzheimer's disease, but simply that aluminium contributed to Alzheimer's, if we showed that unequivocally, the world would change after that moment in time, literally change, and that's an example of how aluminium is used. We live in what I call the aluminium age. There's aluminium in every cell in our body, and all of that aluminium has come through essentially the aluminium industry and the activities of man. And it's never had to be shown to be safe. So whereas you would expect almost invariably that any product that you have to eat or any medicine you have to take or anything you apply to your skin would first have to be shown to be safe, in the case of aluminium, this has never been the case. We have never had to show that aluminium in vaccines is safe, that aluminium in antiperspirants is safe, that aluminium in our diet is safe. We've never had to show that, there's never been any legislation. The only way that we are going to change anything about the way we live in the aluminium age at the moment is essentially through people asking for change. Actually not scientists like myself, but everybody asking for change. Everybody questioning things. If you want to know how much aluminium there is in every single product that you eat or use, then ask for it to be written on the container. We have to have so many different things written on things these days. And yet, you, no, you do not have to be told how much aluminium there is in a product. There is a real need, I think, for people to be able to communicate this information, not simply to me, but actually to each other, so that more and more people can understand how different people respond to including a silicon-rich mineral water in their everyday diet. 
Um, so this is something I think we would like to be able to establish, some forum of some sort, whereby people have the opportunity to share their stories of drinking silicon-rich mineral waters and, and hopefully share the benefits of it. Like a discussion forum online? Yeah, exactly, so, yeah.